<laughs> you know what they say about guys with cannons on their chest? <laughs> Not really, do you? Because I, I, I don't. Hey, what's up, my peoples? MGo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Bad Cube War Dog. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. It's right here, very simple packaging. Warrior War Dog, you have Justice Force. And right here you have War Dog and Justice Force. And Warrior War Dog, Warrior War Dog, Bad Cube logo. On the back of the box we have a nice piece of artwork here of War Dog in his robot and tank mount. Got tech specs right here. And you have a bio if you'd like to read it. And that's basically it for the packaging. And also included in the packaging, you get cards! Yay! Cards! You get the Masterpiece-esque trading card right here. And you also get the Bad Cube trading card with that same piece of artwork and the same tech specs and bio that was on the back of the box. So there you have that. And you also get a poster! Yay! Wall art. Get a little poster here of War Dog. It's actually pretty nice. So, there you go. Yay! Stuff. So there you go. Now moving right along here, we have War Dog, which is Bad Cube's take on a masterpiece Warpath. And uh, I will say right now, I really like this figure. Really, really do. Very cool figure. Get in close here so you can see the details. Lots of nice molded details going on on this tank mode. Lots of rivets here. Just lots Lots of molded details. It just looks really, really good all around. Just so nicely done. Very, very cool. I really dig this guy. You do get, you know, a couple uh, little spots of silver picked out. You get some spots of silver here, right here, right here. A little bit on the back, right there. Just to break things up a little bit, but still, all around, very nicely done. Nice molding here on the treads. Um, he doesn't actually roll or anything. There are no wheels. Um, you can slide him around. He slides. It's a good slider. He can drift. He's a drifting tank. Fast and the Furious Part 17. Tank drift. That'll happen. Watch. It'll happen. <laughs> and Tyrese will love every second of it, and I know he will. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, very, very cool tank mode. Um, the turret can rotate. It's on a nice soft ratchet, so it rotates very nicely. You can use a transformation joint to get a little bit of a uh, little bit of lift out of it. And the cannon part itself does pivot downward, although that, that does kind of break things up a bit and looks a little weird, so I don't usually mess with that, but you can still... And, you know, get a little bit of posability out of the tank turret itself. And just for comparison, let's bring in some official masterpieces. Here he is with Sideswipe. So you can see how he scales there with the official masterpieces. Here he is with Bumblebee. There you have that. Here he is with MP10. You can see how he scales there with Prime. There you have that. Here he is with Bat Cube's other offerings. Here he is with Brawny. You can see how he scales there with Brawn. That's and here he is with Huff. And you can see how he scales there with Huffer. And there you go. But yeah, very, very cool. Um, so, I guess there's nothing left to do but get down to the transformation, shall we, let So, this guy has a very involved transformation, so we're going to try to get through this, and I'll probably be exhausted by the time we're done, but we're going to do it! We're going to power through. So, you just want to start untabbing stuff here. You just want to come back here. You want to pull these sections apart right here, and then take this panel, flip this up. You want to pull the treads out, because this plate right here pegs in the sides of the treads right here on the other side. So you want to pull that out so you can then pull this section out like that. And this is a whole separate piece. This is where the uh, the gun stores also. 
And this is basically just to kind of clean everything up. I mean, it serves a purpose in robot mode also, but it also, you know, kind of cleans the tank mode up so you're not looking at all this in the bottom. Um, you know, if you don't like parts forming, you can just totally leave this off to the side. It doesn't really affect anything. The only thing it really affects is that you can see now, you can kind of, you can kind of see through him now. So it does, uh, it, it does fill in that gap there, so... I guess if you don't like parts forming and you don't like gaps, then none of this is going to make you happy. But, hey, you got options. That's all I'm saying. But um, now that we've done that, we're just going to start untabbing pretty much everything else here. You want to come up front here and you want to untab these pieces. Well, not that whole piece. You just want to take these pieces right here and bring them down like that. They just clip in right in here. Bring that down. You stay in there for now. Bring those pieces down. And you see their little tabs right here. They'll just tab into themselves. Boom. Tab those in. Get those out of the way. You want to take the turret and just bring it up here. You kind of want to take these side pieces here. Spread them a little bit here. Or just untab them all together. So you're going to bring this whole assembly up and out of the way. And we'll put this back together for now. So, we got that up and out of the way. Then you're just going to start untabbing things. Untab this section of the tread right here. Untab this section of the tread right here. Then you want to just pull this out right here. You see these sections tab into the sides there. Untab all that. Then you want to come and untab these sections right here. This one already came undone. You can see right there, just tabbed in right there. So untab that. Untab this side, which is a little stiffer. Come on. Yeah. Get up. Get up. There we go. Untab that. Then bring all that down. And now you're kind of left with just kind of a floppy mess. But don't worry. This floppy mess is going to turn into a solid robot. So don't worry. Don't worry, peoples. So first thing we're going to do is work on the arms. So, well, one thing you can do now is you can take this. Well, actually, no. We'll leave that. We'll leave that for later. We're going to work on the arms now. This is what we're going to do. So you're going to take this whole section right here, which is the arms. You're going to take them and you're going to bring them, slide them apart on this bar right here. Once you've done that, you're going to take the tank tread. You're going to unpeg it right there. And take this section and flip it back. Flip it back right there. And this whole assembly with the shoulder is kind of a little intricate move here. So hopefully I will be able to show this off successfully. Let me rotate this. That way you can kind of see what's going on here. So what are you going to do here? You're going to take this piece right here. You're going to slide it over. You're going to take this whole assembly right here. This whole joint assembly right here. You're going to bring it up. You're going to bring it up like that. And then you're going to pull it out. I get up all oh, come on. Come up. There we go. It wasn't up all the way. Make sure it's up all the way. And then you're going to bring it out. Like that. And once you've brought it out straight, then you're going to take this piece and slide it back over. That's going to give you room to work here. Then you're going to bring this over here. This is going to be hard to show because this is <laughs> you, you don't have a lot of room to work here, and it's very, very Hard to show this, and I'm bumping the camera, but now you're going to take this assembly right here. You're going to move it up. It's on a little tiny ratchet, too, so that kind of makes a little more, bit more of a pin in the butt here, but you're going to take it and bring it up. This is the only part of the transformation that is legit a little bit frustrating, just because you don't have a lot of room to work, and it is quite intricate. So there we go. You want to bring it up right here. So right there, you can see right there, this port right here is right underneath this peg. So once you have that done, you're going to take this and you're going to slide this up. And it's better if you just push it down. You push it down. So that way, that peg goes into that port in that joint right there. Did I get it? There we go. So you want it like that, if you can even see it. <laughs> and once you've done that, you take 
this shoulder piece right here and slide it back over and there you got the shoulder done the instructions I will say this I'm going to show this in the instructions um, because the instructions are actually extremely, extremely helpful with this. Uh, where is it? So basically, the, you know, the instructions show you, you know, obviously with pictures, what to do with that shoulder assembly. If the pictures aren't doing it for you, they are very, very considerate, and they actually have the instructions here with the, you know, they actually have the instru instructions written out for you. So it's explaining to you exactly what you're doing, which is very, very thoughtful. And again, Warbitron, bold forms. This is how you do instructions right. Take notes. So I like how they will they actually explain to you in text how to do the shoulders if the picture instructions alone aren't enough for you. So good instructions, very, very good instructions on this guy. But anyway, once you got the shoulder done, you are now going to take the forearm right here. You're going to pull it up, which can be quite hard to do. Yeah, this part also is very hard. Uh, push it up, push it up, greatest of ease. There we go. Push it up, you hear it click, and then you can extend the arm down like that. And then you take the tank tread here, it's on a double hinge, just take it and bring it up against the back of the forearm. And there you've got an arm done. And now we gotta do all that again. I'm already tired. So, unpeg the tread, take this section, flip it back, just rotate this just to get it out of the way. And <laughs> slide this over, bring this up, bring this around. Actually, this side is a little bit looser. This side's a bit easier to work with. Um, but once you have it there, slide that back over. And then you can bring this up, like that, bring that up. And then you can take it and slide that into that peg right there. And then you can slide that over and boom. Oops, I didn't do it. Come on, come on. There we go. Again, it's, it's, it doesn't help that this is on a little ratchet, so it does kind of make things a little bit harder to work with. There we go. Got it in. And I'm sorry if you, if, I, it, there's no real way to show this properly because this whole thing is just, it's small and there's not a lot of room to work and it's just, it's hard to show on camera, so my apologies. But like I said, the instructions are actually very thorough with explaining how to do it, so if you're not exactly getting it from what I'm showing you here because you can't really see, uh, the instructions will show you very, very clearly. So again, with the forearms here, you just bring that up. Like that, and then extend the arm out, take that, and bring the tread up against the back of the forearm. There we go, now we got the arms done. You can take this gray assembly right here, rotate it 180 on this armature. There we go, rotate it like that. Oh, get this out of the way. Rotate it, and we got that done here. Now we're going to work on the turrets. The turret, you want to take each side here, bring it out. You see this is on double hinges right here. You want to take this section right here, just flip it around to reveal the head, bring the head up, and you see this little post will plug in right there. So, plug that in, plug that in, greatest of ease. Again, because the camera's on, everything wants to be hard. There we go. And now you're going to take these sections right here, you're going to bring them under this piece and this bit right here will actually tab in right in here. So you just want to bring that under and around and tab that in right there. Oops. Tab that in right there. Same thing, other, same thing on this side. Just bring it under, take it, tab it in, and boop. There you go. Once you've done that, you're going to take... <laughs> There's so much going on on this figure. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Now you want to take this piece right here. You want to rotate it. So now this is sitting in this gap right here. And then you're going to take it and push it in like that. And once you've done that, you're going to bring all this up. There's a 
post right here that will plug in right here and there is a tab right here that will plug in right in here. So you want to plug in the post first. So you want to plug in that post right there and then you can take this, bring it up and snap it in the side of the body and there you got that side done. Second bus, same as the first, bring this around. <laughs> Again, I'm so sorry if you can't see everything I'm doing clearly, but there is a lot going on here. So bring this around, push that in, bring this up, plug that in, and bring that in, and oh, make sure it's pushing all the way. There we go. And just tab that in right there. Boom. And there you go. So you got the upper body all done. Now it's time to, actually, we're not, we're not done with the upper body, because now we have this piece right here. You want to take this piece, just bring it up against his back. You see there are two little, two little triangular notches right here. They're going to fit right over these little triangular bits right here. So just bring it up. That'll fit over there. And this will tab into the slot right back here. And lock that in place. And then you take these pieces here, and you'll see there are little grooves right in here on either side where these panels will just sit in nice and snug like right there. So now all that's locked into place. Now we're done with the upper body. Lower body is a lot easier. So now let's get down to that. You're just going to take the hips and you're going to untab them right here. So now you're going to just rotate the leg down and then rotate this whole assembly down like that. You're going to take the foot, you're going to pull it out, you're going to take this bit right here, slide that in, you're going to take this piece of the tread, fold that in, and then you're going to take this one piece of tread here, flip it back, and then bring this whole piece down, bring that back up, and that now gives you a flat foot. So that's really cool how that works. And then once you've done that, you're going to take this panel right here, just bring it down, and this will tab in right in here, right where you can see my finger through it. So take that, tab that in right there, push it together so it tabs into place. Now you're going to take this panel right here and fold it in to the leg like that, and then take this whole assembly and push it in like that. And then just push the foot up, and there you got a leg all done. Second bus, same as the first. Rotate that down. Rotate that down. Ah! Pull out the foot. Flip that in. Flip that back. Bring it down. Boom. Take that. Push that in. Right there. Take this. Bring it around. Tab it in. Close it up. Take this panel here, flip that in, like that, push that in, take the foot, bring it up, there you got the legs all done. Once you got that, let's raise the camera a tad here, once you got that done, take this crotch panel here, just bring that up, bring this whole assembly up and back and you'll see this will hook in right in here, so just hook that into the body and then bring that up. Bring your legs down, and then this will tab in right there. So bring it down, boom, and there you go. There you got War Dog in his robot mode. I am exhausted. I'm tired. <laughs> that's a transformation that takes a lot out of you. I mean, that's just, jeez, man. But uh, the end result is an amazing looking robot. This just looks really, really, really cool. Just, ah, oh, man. It looks so, so good. Getting close here on the on his chest cannon. Oh, look at that one. Look at his head sculpt. Getting close here. Getting close on the head sculpt here. Very nice head sculpt. I mean, that's definitely Warpath. Very cool. Nice paint work there with the silver, with the blue. Little vents in the, uh, the mouth plate picked out. A little bit of paint right there on his head crest. It's very cool. Just all around, it's a very, very nice design. Let me raise the camera up just a tad. But, yeah, just 
all around just a really, really cool design. I mean, it's a very intricate transformation, but it all works, and it all works very, very well. Um, you know, the only, the only real frustrating part is just that little bit with the shoulders. That, you know, again, you just, you don't have a lot of room to work, and you're moving these little parts around, but... Um, that's the only real part of the transformation that, that bugs me a little bit. But, again, once you know what you're doing, it, you know, it, it, it's, it, it gets better. Um, but still, all around, a very, very nicely done robot. Very, very cool. I mean, and it, and it cleans up, you know, it, it cleans up really well. Now, articulation-wise, he can rotate his head. He can do a full 360. He can look up. Up. Not really down, but he can look up. Uh, the shoulders are on a ball joint connection right here, so you do have nice full range of movement. And you can also move them all the way up. You do also have this little ratcheted joint right here, so you can kind of position the shoulders however you want. If you want them sitting higher, if you want them sitting low, totally up to you. Full rotation. Uh, you do get a bicep swivel. You do get 90 degrees of bend there. At the elbow, you do get, oh, you do get wrist swivels, the hands open and close. You do get a ratcheted waist joint. Legs can go forward, go back. A nice ratchet. That far forward, that far forward, that far back. You get some inward and outward movement, full outward movement. You get a thigh swivel. You get 90 degrees of knee bend. A nice ratchet joint. And the feet are pretty much crazy posable because you got a lot of joints to work with here. You got a joint up here, you got a joint here, and you got a ball joint right here. So you have a lot of range of movement. You have ankle tilt, you have lots of forward movement, you got a lot of backward movement. So you can definitely get this guy in some good poses and still be able to put his feet flat on the ground. So very, very cool. Now, of course, he does come with accessories that we put off to the side here. He does have his gun right here, which just pegs in right there. You'll see a lot of molded details on the inner part here. Very cool. So this basically becomes a gun and a shield for him. So we'll put his gun in his hand. Now there's a little trick to this. You can see it does have the, uh, the tabs on either side. And he's got the slot here in his palm. You basically want to put his put the gun in his hand like that and then as you rotate the gun in it will close his fingers and at the same time take that tab and push it into the slots and there you go. Now he's holding his gun. And you do the same thing with the shield here. It does uh, make things a little bit easier if you fold it up it gives you a little bit more room to work but it works the exact same way. Just open his hand up and then just kind of kind of put his fingers in. And then as you close his hands with it, I will close his fingers around it and push that tab in. And there you go. So now he's got a big shield. He's got a big gun. And there you go. And this is this is actually a reference to the uh, to the G1 cartoon and they explain it in the instructions also. If I can find that page here. To do. Where is it? There it goes. <laughs> they actually do explain it. I don't know well you'll be able to see here, but I will read it to you. It will. It says right here, If you are a fan of this character, you must remember an episode with the Knight and Javelin Challenge. This is where we got the idea from. But we want a more sci-fi representation, so he comes with a shotgun, plus a heavy shield for additional firepower and fortification. In near future, it is likely that we will make an add-on set to recreate the Red Knight with Javelin version. So, again, this is kind of the G1 masterpiece thing of, hey, here's an accessory that he used in that one episode of the cartoon. So, there you go. This is referencing something. Not exactly, because it's not a javelin, but, hey, I guess they figured, well, he would, he would kind of look dumb with a javelin, so give him an actual gun. But there you go. Now, we can't actually store all this. Um, there is robot mode storage for this. Let me just get this out of his hands here. So if you don't want him holding all this, you can totally store this on him. So again, you just have the two posts right there. Just plug in right there. Just plug it in. Boom. Like that. Take this. Flip it up. It'll tab into itself. Bring this down. And that will tab in right there. Flip this over to either side. 
and you'll see this little just tab in right there. And you'll see there are two little clips right here. And you can take this and just clip it onto this little back panel. Boop, right there. There you go. Now it gives them more of a backpack, but still, it's a way to, uh, to store everything on him. And oddly enough, it doesn't make him back heavy. You can see it still stands just fine. So again, um, totally up to you. And also, as usual, if you don't like this at all, then you can just take it off. Oops. That popped all that off. <laughs> this is actually a very solid connection. It's just the fact that you do have to apply quite a bit of force to remove to remove this once you have it clipped on. So this is actually a very, very solid connection. But there you go. There you go, War Dog. Now for comparison. Here he is with Masterpiece Bumblebee. Just so you can get a sense of how he scales with the other dudes. There he is with Masterpiece Bumble, right there. Here he is with Sideswipe, and of course Prowl, Wheeljack, and them. They're all the same height, so again, just to give you an idea of how he scales there. Here he is with MP10. Let's see how he scales with Prime. There you have that. What else have we got? What else? What else? Let's bring in some Decepticons. Here he is with Soundwave. We'll bring in Screamer right here. See how he scales with some Decepticreeps. Right there. Let's get these guys out of the way. What else have we got? What else have we got? Here we have Brony. Here we have Huff. You can see how he scales with his Cubex partners here. Bad Cube. Bad Cube slash Cubex. The Cube Bad Cubex. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So there you go. Good looking set of figures there. And here he is with the Generations Warpath. That we got a couple years back. So there you go. Very, very nice. Very nice. I really, really, I dig this figure. I dig this figure so, so much. The engineering behind this thing is crazy. I mean, and there's some, some intricate little stuff going on here, like I said, especially with the shoulders. That's really the most intricate part of this transformation. Other than that, I mean, it is pretty straightforward. Once you know what you're doing, I mean, you saw like halfway into the transformation, I just had a big floppy mess in my hands. But everything just comes together and taps together super solidly and makes for a nice, clean, just dead solid robot. And this figure is definitely, definitely worth getting. If you have any, any interest in this whatsoever, then by all means, pick it up. And if you would like a war dog of your own, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so do check it out. And I think that's pretty much it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Bad Cube War Dog, and this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud. Palm in your face! <laughs> Warpath, kablam! Oh, I hate it when you do that, I really do. And, um, listen, um, I, I don't like it when this is pointed directly at me, so if we could just move this over just, just a smidge, just, just a smidge, there we go, there we go. Now I feel safe. All right, now listen, I need you to... Oh! No! Jeez, man! Sorry, my targeting system's a little off, and sometimes I go kablam, cause I always, sometimes what I'm meaning to... Um, okay, so, um, you know what I'd like you to do? I'd like you to go on a mission. Far, far away, far that way, just as far away from me as you can get, okay? So just go ahead, go, go, go ahead, that way. Keep going, keep, keep going, keep going. Don't point that at me, keep, keep going, keep, keep going, okay? Thank you. Ish, hate it when that happens. Oh, we shot the microwave!